Hey guys, happy Wednesday. It is that Dividend Guy coming at you with another Robinhood portfolio update. Hopefully everybody's having a GGD, a great green day in the market. You know I always wish the best for my viewers and subscribers. So guys, today we're going to go over the overall portfolio performance. We're going to look at the buying power, the individual stock performances, and then of course the watch list. Both look like they're out of my buy range, but let's take a look. So for today, we are up, or sorry, for, for today, we are down about $10. Keep in mind, the market's still open, so the the total cost will fluctuate. I just want to do the video a little early because I'm hanging out with my niece and nephew tonight. And otherwise, I would be recording it at like 9 or 10, and I don't want to do that today. So I'm recording it a little early. So fluctuation, you know, just expect the prices to kind of change. But we're we're down about, I'll say, 12 bucks right now. The week mark, we are up $6, so a very small profit, not big. But, you know, we'll take a little bit of a gain there. For the one month mark, that can there we go. We are down about eight hundred and seventeen dollars, down one point six percent. The three month mark, we're down about fourteen hundred dollars, down about three percent there. Uh, year to date, we are down six hundred fifty six dollars and seventy four cents. We're down one point three percent. For the one year mark. We are down right around three grand, two thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars, or down about five point six percent, and then all time. I knew that was needed to switch. There we go. Uh, we are up fourteen thousand five hundred twenty-four dollars and forty-eight cents, or have an all-time return of around forty-one percent. So right now, guys, we're sitting at fifty thousand one hundred thirty-three dollars and nine cents. Of course, that will change due to the fact that the market is open, but fifty thousand plus dollars, which is great. Buying power of $15.83. And that I'm going to be sitting pretty on until Altria pays me at the end of the month. So, jumping right in, we've got Realty Income, my favorite monthly dividend paying stock. Makes me a landlord without all the headaches of rent. Look, rent collection, don't have to worry about toilets being clogged. No plumbing issues, don't have to worry about any BS about insurance or anything like that. Company does it for me, so... It's really nice. This is one of my favorite companies because I've always liked the idea of owning real estate, but I don't like the idea of getting calls at 3 o'clock in the morning for a toilet or hounding tenants about rent or anything like that. So this is a really easy, carefree way to be a landlord. So I have 143 shares of this dividend aristocrat, around $9,000 worth of market value. Average cost is right around 67 bucks per share. 18% of the portfolio is in realty income. Today we're down about 20 bucks. Total we are down around $630. So this is a buy for me currently. Uh dipped about four four bucks and some change. So I'm excited about that. I did buy a share with the T Row price dividend, but as of right now, um, all the dividends that I have, as long as the price stays around where it's at, all the dividend money is gonna be going towards um T Row price. So I and I may I may switch it. So like I, I may decide, you know. I want to average cost average down on realty income. It kind of just depends on if I can buy one or two shares. I always do this thing where like it it bothers me when the share count isn't at a zero or a five. I don't know. It's OCD thing of mine. So it does bug me that both um, Altria and T Row Price aren't at zeros or fives. It's one of those things that like that's why I don't do fraction fractional shares. They piss me off. But Coca Cola. <clears throat> Want to add another zero behind that? And eventually another zero behind that. 1,000 shares of Coke would be great. But goal right now is 100 shares. $628 worth of market value. Average cost is right around $61 per share. 1.25% of the portfolio is in Coca-Cola. Today we're up 6 bucks in change. Total, we are up 20 bucks or 3.34%. I want that to go down. I really do want to own more Coca-Cola. Eventually, I want this to um, eclipse Altria as the biggest payer for this set of months. So, that'll take time. Altria pays twice as much, so I'm going to need about twice as much cash in the stock. Plus, Pepsi, or excuse me, um, Coca-Cola is more expensive. So, be between the share price being about 20 bucks more than Altria and the dividend being less than half, I will need double or triple the amount of money in Coke that I have currently in T Row or excuse me in Altria. So that would be around a thirty or forty thousand dollar position, which 
that's like the whole portfolio. So it will take time, but I think, you know, give it a couple of decades and you might be able to see, you know, maybe a, uh, Maybe a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar position in Coca Cola. I think this is going to be one that I just buy for the rest of my life and sit happy and sit pretty and let those dividends compound for me. So next we've got Altria. This is the biggest pair in the entire portfolio. I love the company. Um, got three hundred fifteen shares, around fourteen thousand dollars of market value. Average cost is right around forty seven dollars per share. Twenty eight percent of the portfolio is in Altria, so about. A third of my money is in this stock, which a lot of a lot of investors have asked me if that bugs me. Nope, they have consistent year-over-year growth. They have uh, pricing power with their Marlboro brand. They are um, trying to diversify. It's not always perfect, but the jewel the jewel mishap sucked. But um, overall, I think that the company has made some really strategic moves. I know that they have an acquisition plan, so. They, they are working on becoming um, less dependent on their tobacco products, and I, I do think that's that's the future. But currently, the brands that they own are the biggest in their market, just like Coca-Cola is, and that's part of why I own them, because they have branding power, pricing power, and loyal, customer loyalty. So right now, we're, we're break-even, or, da- or we're down or up, because the market's moving, but I'll just say we're break-even. We're down today, but for... For the total return, where you're down over 900 bucks, or six percent decline, which is fine. Um, this is one of those that I would love to cost down average into, but it's such a big position at this point. I'd rather focus on Coca-Cola because I do want it to eclipse that total. But total dividend payment of around 300 bucks, that's going to be going towards um, hero price. Next is Apple. Woo, down, but not down enough for me. One share, 162.79 for market value. Average cost is thirty two sixty six, um, and then we have point three two percent of the portfolio is in Apple, and then today we're down two eighty total. We're up thirty bucks, up twenty almost twenty three percent on Apple. This um, just just like I said with Coca Cola, I want this to eclipse Avvi, but good luck because Avvi is such a big position and big money money maker for the portfolio that it will take a pretty big amount of cash, especially for Apple, given the small dividend. But I'm in this more for growth and dividend growth, and I just love the company. I've been an Apple believer for a very long time. Followed Steve Jobs and his story and the iPod and the iPhone, and just, it's it's insane how, how well run this company is. Love Tim Cook, the CEO, so no complaints here, and I will be adding more to it when it makes sense. As of right now, I don't want to I don't want to buy at a 20% premium to my original price. So I will not be adding to Apple currently. It needs to drop a lot more for me to be purchasing. If it got back down to like 125 or 130, I'd buy it. Next is AbbVie. Dang, it keeps going up. <laughs> it, it bothers me. I want it, I want to see red on on AbbVie. But a lot more red than I'm going to get. Currently sitting at 95 shares. $15,000 worth of market value. Average cost is right around $95 per share. 30.5% or 31% of the portfolio is an AbbVie. So between this and Altria, I have 60% of my portfolio in two stocks, which is a lot. Today, we're up 1%. Total, we are up $6,287 or nearly 70%. This by far is my best investment. I know a couple days ago I talked about it, but... I bought them during an acquisition. They were buying another company, and I feel like it, it paid off. Um, I, I estimated intrinsic value of the company before the, the merger to be about $120. Now, I think I, I, I originally thought together they'd be around $150 to $160. So it's, I'm pretty cl- I was pretty close. Um, originally, I thought the company was around, like I said, $100 to $120. And then with the acquisition, I thought like $140 to $155-ish. So... It's a little higher than what I thought it would be at, but you know that's good for me. So the the price is compounding; it's going up um, over time, which is phenomenal. And of course, the dividends have grown. So I bought the stock uh, when I bought it like four years ago. Um, the dividend was one hundred seven per share, and now it's one forty six or one forty seven, I believe, per share. So dividends grown, stock appreciation is great, and that compounded return of sixty to seventy percent is phenomenal. Then we got T Row Price, which is down even further, which I love to see. So we have 101 shares currently. 
$11,000 worth of market value. Average cost is right around $122 per share. 22% of the portfolio is in T. Rowe price. Today we're down $103. Total we're down $1,200, down about 10% on the company or on this position. So T. Rowe price is down. The overall financial markets have been shaky, which this is an investment company and they pretty much sell ETFs. Um, so when the overall, and a lot of it is in U.S. equities as well. So when the banking sector takes a shit, they're going to get hit. When the housing market takes a shit, they're going to get hit. When oil drops, like any any big commodity pricing fluctuation is going to drop them. Any big like sector issues are going to drop them as well. So I love them. Um, and I will be adding um, to this position with dividends as much as I possibly can. Then, of course, we've got my watchy watch list. Uh, Visa, I'm not touching you with a 10-foot pole. I say that almost every day, but it ticks me off. I want Visa. I swipe my card about you know, I, I use it to pay rent. I use it to pay my utility bill, any groceries, food, toilet paper, whatever I buy, I buy with a Visa card. So might as well get a portion of that profit. I just want it at the right price. And for me, I think I'd say 190 to 200 bucks. So it needs to drop about $30 per share for me to even be remotely interested um, in the, in owning the stock for, for purchasing. I want the company. I love the business model. I think it's phenomenal. They're the biggest player in the space, just like Coke, just like Marlboro uh, with Altria. But um, I don't want to buy it at an inflated price, so I'm just going to sit and wait and be patient, and hopefully the patience pays off and I can buy it at a price like I did with Abvi. And then we've got Berkshire Hathaway. Guys, I'm super excited to um, go to the Berkshire meeting, and I am also pretty interested to see what the stock is going to do around that meeting because there's a lot of hype around the company and the, the earnings reports and just the different arms of Berkshire. So... It'll be interesting to see how the stock reacts to the um, the meeting and see if it goes up or down. Um, I currently wanted to buy it around three hundred bucks a share, so I'll sit and wait, and uh, I'll I'll pull the trigger. Um, I do want to be a shareholder by the end of the year, so the main focus is for the portfolio guys to get Coca Cola to hundred shares to really take advantage of that T row price dip and you know to get Visa at like one ninety to two hundred and to get Berkshire around three hundred bucks a share. So. A lot, a lot to do this year within the portfolio, but I think, you know, given fl market fluctuations and patience, you know, everything will will come as it's supposed to. Um, Buffett says that money goes to the patient, you know, patient people become wealthy, wealthy people become are, are patient. So I, I love Buffett, love how he invests, and I'm just trying to follow his pillars. And I mean, it's working for me so far, guys. I was a broke 23-year-old working a $9 an hour job um, you know, so I was busting my butt for nearly nothing and just trying my best to put any extra dime or any, anything I had into the market. Everybody told me I'd lose my money and here I am sitting looking at Berkshire Hathaway stock, contemplating my buying prices. I was a rookie, had no clue what I was doing, had no confidence at all. And I just jumped in and now I have a $50,000 portfolio at 27. So this is just going to keep compounding. So I'm super excited for the future. And plus I've got a YouTube channel that's growing too. So uh, the original goal behind this channel was to just focus on my investing, keep me, the channel and, and, and investing are consistent. I've just been more and more consistent with the investing portion than the YouTube part, but I'm, I'm working on staying just as consistent now. I'm trying to stay parallel and make sure that that keeps moving forward too. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button on my channel, that dividend guy. And hit the like button on this on this video. It helps so much. It helps YouTube know that I'm not a loser. <laughs> so with that being said, guys, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the, the content. Um, and I will see you guys in the next update. Take care.